So ChatGPT Agent Mode is live and I've basically checked every single review and use case out there to give you guys the best examples for what you can actually use it for and what not. Now for those who are new to it, ChatGPT Agent is basically a general purpose AI designed to perform tasks autonomously from start to finish. You can think of it as ChatGPT with its own virtual computer within a closed environment. While every website is worried about bots, now everyone becomes a bot. Before we dive into the examples, it's good to know what the agent exactly is capable of because you only have 40 runs per month with a ChatGPT Plus subscription so you want to use them wisely. Generally speaking, it can do three things. Number one is web interaction. So it can use a text-based browser to read web content and a visual browser to interact with website elements like buttons, forms, and input boxes. This means it can navigate, click, scroll, and make decisions about relevant data, going a bit beyond basic web scraping. Number two is actually content creation. So it can write and run code, generate images, presentations, documents, synthesizing information it gathers from the web. It can also do screenshots. And number three is kind of a combination as the workflow automation. So it combines deep research capabilities, searching multiple websites for comprehensive answers with the operator functionality, allowing it to take actions on those websites. So deep research is searching, operator was taking actions, and agent is basically their newborn. But let's go through the examples now. Now for the first one, I wanted to see how it can navigate around YouTube and extract info. So basically scrape it. So I told the agent to make screenshots of the official YouTube page, a sample search result page, as well as the sections of a YouTube channel. So it went off, opened YouTube, picked a random channel, in this case, the TED one, homepage, search page, channel page, about section, video section, and the post section. Now, as you can see, the video previews are not fully loaded on those screenshots, but I assume they will fix this soon because this can be very useful. But for now, I would give it a seven out of 10. By the way, I also asked the agent to do actual screen recordings, but it failed and it just returned me two green screen videos but screen recordings would be a game changer. So for anyone at OpenAI watching this, please hit record. Now for the next one, I wanted to test the research because we already have deep research. So how is the agent different? I told it, find 10 YouTube channels in the car niche between 100,000 and 1 million subscribers and write a personalized email draft for each of them where I'm trying to sell them my video editing service. When I first ran this prompt, I didn't specify for using youtube.com. So it basically went off to another website with curated channels and just took them from there, which is fine, but I can also get this with deep research and I want the direct accurate info. So I ran it again, specifying that it should go to youtube.com only. And that time it got the info directly from YouTube, which is important. I also asked the agent to draft the personalized outreach email based on the last video of the YouTube channel and it did it. It also gave me the screenshots to check, which was very nice. So eight out of 10 for this one. Now out of curiosity, I put the same prompt into deep research and it just gave me random YouTube channels, which totally not fulfilled my criteria. One channel had only one subscriber, for example, and it also did not get the last videos correct for all of them. So this is something where the agent does make sense. Hyper-personalization and accurate recent info. As the next step, I ask it to prepare the email drafts in my personal Google Mail account for each of the channels. For this, I had to Google log in into the agent. So yes, this is risky because it's possible that the agent lands on a malicious site, more on that later, but for now, we like it risky boys. So I took over the process, typed in my email and password, and then it continued. But immediately it had a problem. It couldn't solve the capture, which you need in order to find a YouTube channel's email address. But after I said, just take a test email for now, it actually crafted 10 draft emails personalized to the YouTube channel in my Gmail account, ready to send. I also let it make an entry on my Google Calendar. For now, it seems to work pretty well with the Google stuff, but you have to always make sure you're logged in and take over the browser for that at the beginning. Eight out of 10, pretty useful. Now, another use case with very specific information is looking for a restaurant. I said, find three restaurants in New York with exactly 4.6 stars rating on Google Maps and at least 200 reviews. Again, I specified I wanted to be only searching on Google Maps and it did it. It shortly went to another page, but then came back 
and returned exactly three restaurants with exactly 4.6 stars and over 200 reviews. Then I said please make a reservation at Gramercy Tavern on Wednesday around 6 p.m. It went off until it had to film the information, but since they have a no-show charge of $35, I decided to not follow through. And I also don't live in New York. Now as the next use case, I wanted to make a screenshot based tutorial for my website, similar to those that you see in FAQ articles for example. So I said, go through the video creation process of my website reblin.co where you can basically generate an AI video podcast and document the process with screenshots and descriptions. And it went off and did that. I would say it did a pretty good job. It covered almost every single step except for one. So imagine you have a new website and want to create tutorial articles. This could be very useful. 8 out of 10. Now when it comes to shopping on the other hand, it didn't do a very good job on Amazon for example. I said go to amazon.com and put a gaming chair into my cart and it failed because Amazon blocked the access. Then I went for a more open approach and said find the cheapest gaming chair you can find and put it in the cart. It again tried Amazon and also another German marketplace. Both blocked access, but then it went to IKEA and actually found a gaming chair for only $49. And it's definitely one of the cheapest one I found personally when checking on this. For example, on Amazon and even Timo, they were not much cheaper, but maybe that was just luck. And for the lack of comparison, I would give this feature a 6 out of 10. You should only use it on select shopping pages that actually work. Another use case I've seen is making presentations, but they always look pretty bad, so I prompted the agent, make a presentation about Ozzy Osbourne with images and text and make it look good. So it went ahead, opened the terminal, basically coding the presentation, and it took quite long, around 20 minutes, but the result was not bad. It was actually quite well structured. Now it didn't use as many images as I wanted, but the icons gave it a nice touch. Definitely not as good as what you can do with Gamma for example, so maybe a 6.5 out of 10 for this one. When it comes to navigating social media, I have managed to work it on X for example flawlessly. I told it to find a recent post about cheesecake and reply with a smiley face, which it did. I've also seen this guy here use it to send connection requests on LinkedIn along with personalized messages. This can actually save you a lot of time. And from a benchmark side, one guy tested it on the Arc AGI benchmark and it solved a level 1 challenge. But what about gaming for example? And I know we already have big problems with aimbots and stuff on many games, but I asked it to play chess on Lee Chess and it definitely struggled a bit. It was very slow, but it executed some moves eventually, but at some point it just decided to stop and ask me to take over for some reason. So I really don't know what that was about. It apparently can also play poker. At least this guy here got it to work. Let's hope he didn't lose too much money because the agent definitely has to be monitored if it's doing some risky stuff for you. Because it is not perfect and it can mess up. OpenAI even says it themselves on their website where they describe a prompt injection scenario. Which basically means you send the agent to a website and while searching it encounters a blog post for example with a malicious comment. And this comment attempts to trick the agent into actions you never intended to do. Which is known as prompt injection attack. For example, it might try to command the agent to search your Gmail for sensitive information like a password reset code and it could then instruct the agent to send this code to a malicious website via a URL, enabling the attacker to obtain crucial data about you. So yes, take it with a grain of salt, subscribe if you enjoyed this one, like if you're not an agent and I catch you in the next one.